Hello, my name is Holly Lovelace. I live at 518 Gulf Road in Northfield, Massachusetts. And I am one of the homeowners that is the closest to the proposed compressor station. Um, I have lived here for eight years with my husband and my daughter. And it is an absolutely beautiful piece of property. It's 22 acres. It has gorgeous wetlands. It has a fish pond. It has um, a vernal pool. It has walking trails through absolutely beautiful woods. We've put up a, a disc golf course and um, we even um, sustainably log part of the land. And because it's a, a mixed woodlands, we, my husband and I are bird watchers and we have our, our bird identification books and we sit out on the, on the deck and we're amazed at the number of birds we see here. We've, we've identified more than 50 species of birds just on, just in our backyard, basically. And it is, it's just a gorgeous piece of land. It's a gorgeous home to live in. And on, uh, on June 9th, I got a letter from Kinder Morgan saying that they decided where they were going to put the compressor station and it was going to be only 1500 feet from our home. And I'd been following the controversy about the pipeline going through this very rural um, area of Western Massachusetts, but I really didn't think that the compressor station would be in my own backyard. And we, I was obviously very, very upset about it. And I did my research and I, I knew that this was going to be a life changing event for the worse. And I called my um, mortgage company and I asked what impact this was going to have on, on our family. And they were perplexed at first because they said they weren't expecting this. They hadn't really planned for this and they, they would have to talk to their board of directors to see exactly how this would affect me. However, they said the policy would be that they probably wouldn't offer a new mortgage on a place that may be considered a biohazard area and that I might have some trouble selling the house, though they wouldn't take away my mortgage. I probably could never refinance and I probably couldn't sell. And there's another reason I probably could never sell is that um, my mortgage banker said I would have to call an appraiser and the appraiser would have to agree that my house hasn't lost any value um, for them to, to grant a similar mortgage. And I don't believe that that can happen. And I actually spoke with an appraiser who said that they are their expertise is in um, uh, appraising property near, let's say, not so good neighbors like a landfill or a railroad track, um, you know, things you don't necessarily want your home next to. And he said that he would be concerned, very concerned about my property value. And though I haven't had him here yet, um, it's going to be an issue. Um, I have about $55,000 in equity in this home, this wonderful piece of land that I can't believe I would ever find again. And I'm afraid that we would have to walk away from it um, because we couldn't sell it. And that's a, that's a big chunk of money for someone like me. Um, it's a big chunk of money for anyone to, to look at that loss and to look at what it would do to my credit um, it's, it's really overwhelming. Um, I also called um, my homeowner's insurance company and they were equally perplexed and disturbed about exactly what they would do with us homeowner's insurance wise. And um, I was told that, um, that one insurance company, the second biggest one in the state, Safety Insurance, um, told one of my neighbors who also inquired um, that they don't, they don't insure people in biohazard zones. And that was the first time I'd heard an official say that, that this is a biohazard zone. I'm only 1,500 feet from the proposed compressor station. Um, 
and they would, I would have to go to the Massachusetts high risk insurance pool, which would be extremely expensive compared to what I'm paying now for typical insurance for an extremely rural safe area. Um, and they won't, they won't give me a price because they said they can't tell me about a, uh, um, a possibility. They can't tell me a price on something that hasn't quite happened yet. So I have to wait until we actually have a compressor station for them to tell me whether I can be insured or whether I can afford the insurance, which is just a weight on my shoulders. Um, I have an attorney. I'm very happy to say that I've hired an attorney. I've made an arrangement with an attorney, um, Cristobal uh, Bonifaz, and he said the act of Kinder Morgan sending me that letter has impacted my property already. That I've, al I've already been damaged by the fact that Kinder Morgan considers me in their, what they euphemistically call their notification zone is, is really the high impact zone so close to their compressor station that when I called the FERC attorney in Washington, she couldn't tell me with certainty if, if the compressor station blows up, whether my home would blow up too, because they've never built a compressor station this big in the US. 80,000 horsepower. While Kinder Morgan uh, treated the officials in my town, the police chief, the fire chief, and our um, town clerk, they treated them to a little trip to see one of their compressor stations, which was only a third of the size. And they said, you know, how wonderful it was and how it wasn't really impacting the neighbors and that they don't know. They don't know. They've never built one this big. And when you look at the news articles about um, other communities who tried to block compressor stations and it ended up coming anyway, now they're having all these health problems. There's, there's toxins in the water. They have skin problems. They have, there are cancer clusters. They have migraines. They can't sleep at night. Um, it's, it's just a nightmare that I never ever thought I would have to face when you buy a home in the middle of nowhere, when you specifically went out to buy a home in the middle of nowhere. And to have this happen is, is just an almost unimaginable nightmare. And so you uh, have uh, these wetlands and vernal pools. Could you talk about those? Um, sure. It's, um, there's uh, a stream that comes into the, um, the, south, the southwest corner of my property, and it runs all year. Um, it's not just one of those streams you get after a hard rain. It's a real stream, and it, it spreads out into a gorgeous 100-foot-wide um, wetlands with cattails. We've had um, a great blue heron hanging out there. We get the little green herons hanging out there and um, we watch them fish and um, and then there's a, a pond that the neighbors have um, I don't they've made it so it's much deeper so there's the stream and then this huge area of wetlands and then a pond and we've had um, a beaver in the pond and it really attracts a lot of wildlife um, we have a game camera and there's a fox den on the, um, in our, um, it's really right in our side yard and we have lots of pictures of um, fox and the kits playing around the wood pile. And um, it's, it's an amazing place to live with. We're right in with all the wildlife. Um, I never thought I would be this lucky to live in a place like this. And um, you had, uh prohibitions from the state about uh, right, doing right. anything with these wetlands. Right, so the um, uh, last year we uh, did the paperwork with the state of Massachusetts to ask if we could log part of our land because we have 22 acres and um, a lot of it is um, uh, basically pine trees um, up on the mountain behind me. And uh, they came and they did a survey and they said, yes, this is a certified wetlands on this part of your property and you can't go near it. 
you have to do the sustainable logging on the other part of your property and they um, put up um, tape showing where you could log and so the state knows that this is a, a certified wetlands area um, and that it needs to be protected. Right, right. And um, so you've been trying to talk to Kinder Morgan? Um, I've, I, when I got the letter from Kinder Morgan, there was a phone number and an email address that I could call. And I called the phone number and it didn't answer. And I emailed um, a list of questions that I never got a response from. Then I looked on the, the internet and I found a number for the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, FERC, who it, which is in charge of, of approving pipelines. And I talked to one of their attorneys who, um, who was not very helpful that when I described how big the compressor station was, she said, oh, size is relative. You know, it's not that big. And when I described the problems that other uh, people living near compressor stations has, she said, oh, it's all exaggerated. You're worrying over nothing. And she said, just look at the Kinder Morgan website. And, and she gave me the web address. And she goes, then you'll see you know, that this is really good for the community. And, and you know, there's nothing you know, to worry about. And you know, just go back, just go on with your life and don't worry about this at all. So it was, it was extremely um, condescending and um, self-serving and just wrong. And uh, other neighbors are also affected and how are they reacting? Well, we have, um, we have a, a landowners um, group, uh, the people who not just are living near the compressor station, but also have been told that the pipeline would run through their property. And we meet every two weeks and we strategize and we talk about what our individual lawyers have said and what um, we've been contra contacting our congressmen and writing letters to the senators and the governor and um, trying to get attention from the media um, because people need to know about this. A lot of people don't even know about this any um, farther east than this. Um, I was at a meeting um, for my for my job, I work at Greenfield Community College. I was a, at a meeting in in Worcester, and I was with a bunch of people from colleges in Boston. And I mentioned about the pipeline, and no one had heard of it. No one thought that this was a problem. They they were unaware of it completely, and it was really disturbing to me that this is this is a huge huge deal, and that it, it isn't even on the news in Boston. Uh, how big is the pipe uh, that would be going through, and how big is the acreage of the compressor station? Um, from what I understand, from what I've read in the newspaper, the compressor station, um, or Kinder Morgan, has purchased um, more than 200 acres um, right across the street from my house. And um, that it would be 80,000 horsepower and Sorry, what was the other question? The, the size of the pipe. Oh, yes. Um, the size of the, uh, the pipe is a, is a major concern. It, it'd be the biggest pipe they make for transporting natural gas. Um, the pipe would be 36 inches in diameter, which is madness. Also, because we are categorized as a rural area, they would have it be the thinnest pipe that they can buy and have the cheapest welds that they can make. And they would save a lot of money doing this because we're, we're so, there's so few of us out here that we don't matter. That we are, we are factored into, if, if a pipeline should blow up, if the compressor station would blow up, it wouldn't hurt too many people or kill too many people because there's not very many of us out here. And it's really insulting to have them say that my life doesn't matter, my husband's life doesn't matter, my neighbor's lives don't matter because it's cost effective for them to have thinner pipes. They're also going to bury them very shallowly, not even below the frost line. And that's a problem. Um, in this area, we have amazing frost heaves and you know it's like a roller coaster uh, driving down some of these roads um, in the spring because of the frost heaves. Imagine 
the thinnest possible pipeline is not even below the frost level. You know, if it breaks, it blows up. And, you know, whose yard is that going to be in? Who's, who's going to be there to be uh, in the blast radius when something goes wrong? And it goes wrong all the time. You can Google it. Um, gas um, pipeline explosions. And you'll get so many hits, you'll be, just be shocked. It happens all the time. Um, I read on the internet that a major pipeline incident happens somewhere in the U.S. every 30 hours. It's like, so when is, when is our turn? You know, would we, my husband and I said, we simply won't live here. We will abandon our home. Um, I don't even know if it's morally acceptable to sell my home to someone else just because it, putting someone else in harm's way is, is against what we believe. And what about the trees on those 200 acres? Um, I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, the, the area that was purchased by Kinder Morgan um, is woods. Um, there's one tiny cabin um, owned by uh, Jer Nelson, or previously owned by Jer Nelson. And it is my understanding, though I've never seen this written, that he was given $100,000 just to hold that 200 acres. And then um, if the pipeline is approved, which could be approved within the next couple months, he would get a million dollars for it. So I know a lot of the neighbors who knew him well or know him well are, are very upset that they would sell, he would sell our lives out for a million dollars. I mean, I guess everybody has a figure, um, but it's really un unbelievable that have someone would seen, do that. Have you seen pictures of compressor stations in operation on the internet? Oh yes. I mean. I've, I've, I've been looking on the internet, obviously, for the last three weeks straight, um, you know, trying to find a, um, a, a comparable compressor station to the one they're building, and there are not any in the U.S. Um, you can find them in Germany, you can find them in Europe, and they're, they're not inhabited, inhabited, I'm sorry, you can find them in Germany, you can find them um, in Europe, but there aren't houses around them. You can go to Google Earth and find them, and they're giant. They're giant and noisy and poisonous. They're, they're toxic generators and they don't put them where people are like we do. Um, I understand that, that New York State this year banned fracking just because it's, it's, so, it's so much more poisonous than natural gas they got the conventional way. It's, it's full of um, carcinogens and 15 chemicals known to be toxic and they don't just stay in the pipeline at the compressor stations they get released on a regular basis just into the air um, including the most toxic thing is benzene and what's terrifying about benzene is that it goes up and then it comes back down and it finds the lowest level it gets into the water it flows down the mountain um, the uh, the the main water source for the town of uh, Northfield is basically a lake and it's right downhill from the compressor station. The watershed for it includes the compressor station. That's terrifying. I mean, if they, it's, it's like if you were lived in Boston and they were, they were threatening to poison the Quabbin, people wouldn't put up with it. Why are we putting up with it? Why do we have to put up with it? It makes no sense. And what about the lights? Oh, the uh, compressor stations, even though they're unmanned, no one would be there at this massive, massive uh, uh, industrial site. No one would be there, you know, for on most days that it's run remotely by computers in, in Texas. And it's, it's lit 24-7, 365 days a year. Now, if you come to my house when it's dark on a cloudless night, on a moonless night, you can see the Milky Way like it's just so brilliant and perfect. And, you know, it makes you it, it's almost proof that there's a God just looking at the, the sky. It's so dark here. You can see everything. But the compressor station would be brightly lit. 24-7, 365 days a year. We wouldn't have that anymore. We would, you know, the light pollution 
um, would, would really detract from the experience of living in a very rural area. And so Northfield has started to uh, uh, be active in, you know, concerning, I guess, in having select board meetings and board of health meetings. Can you talk about that? Sure. Um, I've been to, um, uh, there's a there's a Northfield against the pipeline group. There's a no fracked gas in mass group. There are several groups fighting this, and they have been um, fighting this for months and months and months. And there's um, there's lot. They have meetings every other week. They put up yard signs. They they sell buttons. They they um, get articles in the paper. They write letters to the editor. They write letters to the congressman. They um, they, they really are trying to, to stop this in any way just a regular, unelected person can. Um, our select board and our board of health um, are, are volunteers, basically. They're part-time, unpaid people who don't have a, a lot of time or resources to fight a multi-billion dollar company like Kinder Morgan. And I, I feel like they, they feel defeated. They feel like it's out of our hands. And they may be right, um, but we just don't know. You went to the DPU, Department of Public Utilities meeting. Can you talk about that? Sure, on just two days after I got my letter, I, I went to the, uh, the DPU meeting in Greenfield Middle School and it was packed. Every seat was taken, it was standing room only. And there were um, there was just so many people who were so dead set against, you know, having anything to do with this pipeline, which, by the way, is not for us. This pipeline is not for the benefit of the people in Franklin County. Not not a not a drop of natural gas would go to anyone in Franklin County. It a little bit would go to Berkshire County. None would go to Franklin County. Most of it, 98%, is destined to export. Um, Berkshire Gas was re recently purchased by a Spanish natural gas company, and they're already building the, um, the intake uh, facility for the, the natural gas that will come from this pipeline. And so when Kinder Morgan says this is for the benefit of the people of Massachusetts, it's a lie. It is an absolute lie. And uh, how, how did the DPU receive comments from uh, Representative Kuvich and Representative Paul Mark, who's your representative here in Northfield? And what, what are their positions on this? Um, both um, Representative Kulik and um, Paul Mark um, have been very supportive of not wanting this pipeline here, and also um, McGovern also they are on the same page and they don't want it here and they made impassioned uh, statements to the uh, um, the DPU as did you know dozens and dozens of citizens in this area who don't want it and there were a few people who do want it including the uh, the mayor of Greenfield who think you know this would be good for business that this would bring us jobs and this would bring us tax money but here's the problem with that uh, Northfield has been promised by Kinder Morgan that that uh, the town would receive 3.4 million dollars in tax revenue each year on the compressor station. That's that's an astounding amount of money. Um, just think of a, a little town of Northfield, which only has a population of about 2,200 people, getting that much suddenly into our tax coffers we could build a brand new public safety station a brand new fire station we could get new fire trucks we could hire more people you know wouldn't that be great but then when you look at the data of other little towns like ours who have been promised millions in tax revenue they never get it they get maybe 10 percent of it and then you've got to look at the other bad things that will happen to northfield because of this um our the property tax rates will have to be adjusted because you know we're now not the rural idyllic toxin free place we used to be now we would be the place that has the giant compressor station the biggest one ever built in the u.s that would become our 
that would become what Northfield is known for. It would, we would be stigmatized by this. Right now, we've got a wonderful reputation of having, you know, Northfield Mount Hermon and the M&M Trail and, um, you know, just this wonderful small town charm and atmosphere, wonderful schools, places where the police log is amusing because, you know, there's things like, you know, a raccoon created a disturbance and someone called the police. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's great to live in a, a safe rural community and that's all going to change. Good. Um, and you, uh, I can see a trail up behind you that goes up to the mountain and you own virtually this. Yep, the whole, it's, it's called, um, we do own the, the mountain behind me. It, it's um, on a map, it's called the First Bald Hills. And the Indians cleared it um, hundreds of years ago in order to make it a meadow so that they could easily hunt deer. And th this I got from the history of um, Northfield book from the library. And um, it's, it's, it's gorgeous up there. There's trails all over the place. Um, we've, uh, we've put our game camera up there and gotten pictures of deer and coyote. We know there's a bear up there though we don't know where it's living, but we know it comes down uh, when we forget to put away our bird feeder because it will come and completely destroy our bird feeder. And I've also seen the tracks um, in the snow. Oh, and my husband, we have a telescope. And um, he's been out here in the middle of the night with the telescope and the bear has come up right behind him. So yeah, we know there's a bear up there. We just don't know where it's living. Um, we also have um, a garnet mine. And uh, you know, it, it's, it's very cool to be able to turn over a rock. Um, it takes some, takes some work. Um, to turn over a rock and on the other side you can find these these um, veins of red crystals which you can actually make jewelry out of and we have a friend who will make jewelry out of the little garnets that that can be found right on our land and we've been um, we've had people ask us if they can mine our garnets and we said no nah, it's, it's kind of just a it's a hobby for us we don't want to sell it right so um it sounds like you're disappointed with the Department of Public Utilities. Um, so I know several towns have tried to become interveners, as has Representative Kulik and Representative Mark, and uh, the lawyers that uh, have been hired by different groups. Um, they have not allowed, been allowed by the Department of Public Utilities to right. be interveners. So um, it's hard to feel like you have much voice in this decision. Right, it, it's, it's really intimidating and daunting to, to fight a multi-billion dollar company which isn't used to being told no. Um, our, our Congress people, our representatives, our, our small town government folks, with all our, our good intentions and all our, you know, wanting to, to be the David against Goliath, um, you know, I feel like, you know, it's, it's, it's so, it's so intimidating. It's just so hard to do, to fight someone with unlimited cash when we have very limited cash to hire lawyers and, and the DPU has been really, um, for the gas company basically, and really unsympathetic to the human beings out here who have stand to gain nothing but heartache from what they're doing. Um, there's, a, there's a town called uh, Minisink, um, New York, and they, they fought this just like Northfield is fighting this. They, they did everything that we're doing. All their Congress people were on board. Their governor was on board. They had letter writing campaigns. They had lawyers. They did everything that we're doing. And it, and even there, the, one of the engineers who designed their compressor station went to FERC and said, don't build this. It's not safe. It's too close to people. Don't do it. And FERC still approved it by a, a, a two to three vote or three to two vote. And, and now the people are sick. And now the people are, you know, getting migraines and skin rashes and bloody noses. And when they leave, those conditions clear up. So it's, it's obvious, it's, it's a hazard to human life and plant life and the water table and 
anything around it, it's, it's a toxic nightmare. Yeah, is there anything you'd like to ask people to do, um, you know, on your behalf or on behalf of the, uh... the... The only people with power, I, I understand in this situation, is FERC. Um, and they are made up of retired oil and gas company executives. And they, though they are funded by the government, they are a separate entity. But how we need to fight this is to to write our senators and to say FERC should not be completely independent. It's dangerous for everyone who's impacted by oil pipelines and gas pipelines and even electrical right of ways that we're never considered. It's said that FERC has always, um, ha they've never met a pipeline they didn't like. They've, they've approved every pipeline that's come to them since 1938. And so it's, it's, disheart it's disheartening to know that. Well, thank you very much, and we hope that that'll change. Thank you.